Hello friends, welcome to UK Dreamers. Welcome to another delightful session with Dr. Ufoma, who's going to tell us everything about MTI in ENT surgery. So welcome, Dr. Ufoma. Hello, everyone. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ufoma, for taking up this challenge, you know, keeping up uh, with us and, you know, coming to the session. We are really grateful. Many of the guys who, who will be coming from the ENT background would be yeah. definitely grateful and you know they'll definitely uh, you know take a lot from your session the pearls of wisdom that you'll be giving in oh it's my pleasure to be here thank you for having me thank you thank you for so before we begin Ufoma, please introduce yourselves okay um basically like i said i'm dr Ufoma ifole i'm uh, in nigerian and i'm an enc surgeon and currently an mti trainee here in the uk yeah that's just a brief that's summary of who i am that's great. Great to have someone from the African subcontinent. That's indeed empowering. All right. So, okay, Ufoma. Uh, so, you are an ENT surgeon by specialty. So, uh, how did you come to know about MTI per se? Well, like, my story is really a very funny story, really. So, um, I knew about MTI uh, through a friend of mine. Uh, she's a doctor here in the UK. And she was my classmate in medical school back in Nigeria. So she came in through the plab route. And then um, she knew I was doing uh, my residency training in ENT in uh, Nigeria. And then I was a senior registrar already. So she, uh, there was a day where I was talking to her and she mentioned MTI. Like, um, for my, do you know you've qualified for MTI? If you want to come to the UK, you don't have to go through the plab route. You just come in as a registrar. You don't have to go through the junior route. You'll be a be the great um, surgeon. And it's really a great opportunity for me. So she mentioned it in 2016. Uh, but then I wasn't really interested. I was like, oh, going to the UK, new environment, all of that, taking up a new challenge. Am I really ready for this now? So I didn't really like, take it seriously, but that was the first time I knew about it. So at times goes by, uh, in 2018, I was talking to the same lady again, and uh, she mentioned this MTI training that, like, and she knew another of our classmates then that went through the MTI and that completed the MTI training, and she has um, swapped over to a tier five, uh, tier two visa, and she's really doing well, making money here, and you can enjoy. She was able to come in with her family, so she mentioned it again. I believe me, and this time I was really interested. I listened really closely, and she was like, "What is?" I said, okay, is medical training initiative by UK government to help um, a developing country and uh, to train their soldiers, sorry, to train their doctors for uh, a better um, medical practice. And then the aim is for them to go back to their country to practice. So at that time, I wasn't really keen on a uh, moving over to the UK permanently, I was like, okay, I finished my residency training. I was a consultant in, I just passed my consultancy and I wanted something else. I wanted to improve on my practice and to get maybe a more first-hand knowledge of what it is to practice in a developed uh, country. So uh, then I just went to my computer and uh, I Googled MTI, I just read all of the requirements and um, every other thing associated with And I discovered I was qualified. The only thing was to pass IELTS exam, that's English and um, past exam. And luckily for me, I was pursuing a master degree. Uh, then in uh, Canada, I was already applied. So I already wrote this IELTS and passed it. So I was like, so there's really nothing just to get a reference and apply. I was like, well, since it doesn't cost any money and there's really nothing against it, why not just give it a try? So I just applied for, I emailed the, I went to ENT UK, which is the pathway for MTI. Um, application for ENT surgeon. So I went and emailed the educational officer and she was responding like, just apply. That's the only thing you need to do. Just apply, send your application and all of that. It was that easy. So I put in my application the very next day and she responded immediately to say, okay, you've met all of the requirements. You are now on the waiting list. And if we get a space, um, we'll send you um, an email to for an interview. So I was like, okay. And that was back in January 2020. Right? Yeah, if I remember correctly. Well, I just sent in the application and I forgot about it. In a couple of months, I didn't hear anything. I was like, oh, wow, what's happening? Is I thought it was that easy as the application process. So I emailed her again and said, ah, what is happening? Am I still in the waiting list for this? She said, like, yes, you have been booked, but currently there's no um, MTI post available. As soon as we get one that's um, matching your requirements, we'll send you an invite. So I forgot about it. So in August that year, that's about eight months after I applied. 
I got um, a response and um, for an interview. To, I remember it was a day I was at work and it was on a Monday morning and the interview was scheduled for Wednesday, two days after. You know, I was like, wow, that easy. Oh, what do I prepare? I was in a panic mood. So I, I called most of my friends in UK. Okay, what's the interview process like? What do I need to do? What do I do? I need to study. You're like, no, just read, just basic things. They'll ask you simple questions. So in fact, believe me or not, I carried my textbook. I started reading, preparing for the, enter, for the interview. Uh, well, um, yeah. So on Wednesday, uh, as the schedule time, I met with the exam with the examiners. Sorry, the interviewers. They were some consultants and the education officer. And basically, it was a simple process. Just like tell me about yourself. Why do you want to take up this entire position? It's very simple question. But in fact, we we're just just we we're just talking casually, and that was how the interview process went. And um, yeah, so um, that was how I got to know about MTR, and that was how I got the job really. That's that's great to hear. So, so uh, guys, what you can take here from Euphoma is you need not need a big span of time to prepare for the interview. Because yeah, you, exactly, just as you are. Yes, because you've already worked in your uh, respective specialties. You know the basic clinical stuff. Yes, a few of the ethical scenarios that are usually asked in the UK's interviews point of view can be a little different or challenging but most of the clinical stuff would be already known to you so uh that's what i'm saying if you get a chance if you like if they say you've got to be interviewed within the next two days like you formatted take it do, don't think you know that maybe oh I, i'm not prepared yet i'm not ready yet mm. if you're getting a chance if you're getting an interview slot take it because as you form i said she had to wait six to eight months to get the slot on and when you get it on you just get it on don't don't leave it don't, don't skip it yes yeah so okay you form us so that was really motivating and inspiring i would say so okay so you got through and you came to the uk so, how, how, like, how has this experience been like uh, about the UK? Yeah, so um, the first thing I want to say about UK citizens is that they are very friendly. They are very welcoming, even more than my own country, I would say. I've not had any problems or any form of discrimination at all since I've been here. They've been more than welcoming. You know, they are the first to say hello, to say hi, how are you, your new face, how have you been, have you experienced me, do you have any problems? So it's been a very pleasant experience. Um, yeah, so through my application process, getting my GMC registration and getting my visas, it was all seamless. Just basically what's online, just uh, follow the instructions, put in your application, it's just seamless. I just got all of that very easily. And, and then I came in with my family, my husband and kids, and we settled in really nicely. The only challenge I'll say I've had so far was getting an accommodation because I came in in um, January during the lockdown, so there was really lockdown. It's not like in my country where there is lockdown, but people still go about their various activities. People here actually follow the rules, sets out. So there was no contact, no communication between household. So getting even and uh, 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 renting agents to get viewing into houses was a problem for me. Uh, so it took me a couple of months to get a house. And then that means I was staying in an hotel with my family, sometimes with friends, family. So it wasn't really an a pleasant experience and most people uh, told me was that it was because of the lockdown that was I had that challenge that's usually not like that but that was one problem I had getting accommodation but now for now I've settled in my family who are doing well then going back to um the workplace it's um I think I had what we call cultural sh shock initially because I had never traveled to the UK before I came in. So really getting to understand the patients as they speak and their language and then for them understanding my accent as well was a problem. But it took me a couple of weeks or months to actually uh, tune into the way they talk to understand their language, their slangs. It was a little bit of a challenge for me initially, I would say I was coming if I'm to be honest. But for now, I think I've settled in really nicely. I communicate well with my patients. And then um, for one thing, you have to know about patient, um, patients or yeah, patient care here in UK is that you have to communicate. You have communication skill has to be top notch because you don't just go about treating patients prescribing for them without carrying them along. Anything you do, the patient has to be aware. They have to give you their consent and you have to convince them, let them know about 
everything you're going to do for them. So and my consultant, I, I learned a lot from them. They take a lot of time counseling patients and get, getting their consent for everything they do. Even if it's just to spray the nose with local anesthetic to examine it, you have to tell the patient why you're doing that. You have to tell them the side effects and everything that goes with it. So it's a lot of talking which I wasn't used to because in my country, I have practice. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this for you. I just tell them what I do for them and I just go ahead. I don't really like explain to them what I do. So that's one challenge I go, but I got to learn on the job and how to do all of this, which um, uh, which I see really is actually the right way to go about it really, because you have to explain and carry everybody along in what you are doing. So basically that's um, practice here. Something else I've um, observed in my practice is the advanced way medicine is practiced here in terms of technology. Believe me or not, in my country, I've not used an operating microscope before I came here. And I was there and I was a consultant. I just qualified as consultant. I came in here. I've not used an operating microscope. We had one in my hospital, but basically it's just one that serves all the source specialties. And patients have to practically pay to use the microscope. So most times they don't opt to use it. So I've never had the opportunity to use it, though it was there, it was available. And it's like a, a precious instrument that you don't just touch <laughs> except needed. But here it's everywhere. It's in the, it's in the clinic, it's in the theater. Operating micro is like a normal instrument you work with. And I hadn't used it before I came in. So it was an initial challenge, but I had to tell my cousin, I opened up to them, like, I don't know how to use it. You have to teach me. I'm here to learn, carry me along on how to do it. They were shocked, like, uh, with your level of experience, your level of training, you don't know how to use it. Oh, I don't. That's, uh, that's where I'm from, in an undeveloped country. So they taught me. They were really nice. They, like, put me through in all of all this. And it's been a very wonderful experience. I would say I do not regret coming here at all one bit so far. <laughs> That's indeed great to hear, Ufuma. As you said, uh, in each of the cultures talk that you were saying, I think everyone goes through that. It's not only you or me. I, I think it's everyone. As you said, like from uh, the way we, uh, the British greet, to the accent, to the items, to the slangs, everything. Everyone is, gets equally challenged with that. So yeah. don't worry about that. You come here, you, you'll get through with it. And as Ufuma said, yes, the infrastructure is indeed great like you know uh, we we worked all in our specialties back in the countries but there's so many things that we haven't seen we've just yeah. read the books or something just read about it in the books yeah or like for, for instance a simple scoring system like we, we've read them in our books for the exam point of view but they would actually be using is the evidence-based practice so yes if you want to learn that uk is indeed a great place uh Ufoma, as has told, you know, like for ENT surgeons, like you can learn a lot. Ufoma, there's another thing that I would uh, like to ask you. Like there's a fear among surgical uh, specialty colleagues. Like when we come to the UK, we won't be given hands-on training. Like well, what have you say on this? Well, it's quite the opposite where I am. My consultants wants me to do everything and anything. Every surgery they're able to do, they want me to be able to do it. So most times, uh, initially, they were like watching over me like a orc uh, so that I don't make any mistakes because I'm practically the only trainee in my center right now because it's not like if a center where a big a center where you have um, like core trainees, so, uh, special surgical trainees. So in my center, I'm the only MTI trainee and then there's some staff grid. So I'm like the only trainee. So I'm with the consultant in each of the operating theater every day. I'm the only consultant subserving four consultants. So only, sorry, only trainees subserving four consultants. So I'm with them every day. And most times they want me to start the surgery and then they watch over me. And most times they only use this word. They, one day will come form where you will be the only surgeon and I will just be in my office resting and you can't tell me when you're done. So it's and on to the end. They want, in fact, practically I able to do most of the surgeries now. And most times they just sit down and watch me do it. But there is enough hands on practice in fact sometimes i get tired i guess just, i'm like i just want to take a break <laughs> you know so yeah so that's it that's great great to hear that because uh, th that's amongst the most what to say feared thing or, or component i would say for the surgical specialty guys who want to come to the uk that you won't be given any hands-on experience so great to hear that so Foma, your journey has been spectacular so far and it will be definitely yeah. inspiring a lot of people so on that note uh, what would you like to advise the like our colleagues who are like from the worldwide aspect who want to come to the uk through the MTI, e ENT, for example? Well, I would say do it. 
do it now because uh, it's a great opportunity. And um, whether you want to come in and go back to your country after the two years, it's a worth, a worth of experience you will get. Um, you know, because sometimes you might want to come in and then go back or stay um, after your training, but it's a worth of experience you will love, you would uh, not regret having. Because for me, I have no regrets at all. It's um, a, a, an opportunity to practice medicine is finest way possible when you find us with us in terms of facilities equipment support because most times we hear we always use statements in nigeria like in id setting in where facilities are available you do this you do this here the facilities are actually available so you do what it is you can do you do the finest of medicine and it's what is practice here on a daily basis just the normal uh, routine practice so if anyone is thinking about coming here just to get the experience, I'll say, don't hesitate. You will not regret it. You're paid, you're, you live well. You, the, there's a um, good uh, lifestyle, um, facilities are available, everything is at your convenience and you're paid well as well. I mean, it's not like you're working for free. You're paid and you, you know, you kind of make a good lifestyle for yourself and your family. So I'll say, I would really encourage anybody to take up the opportunity if you have that opportunity given to you. That's that's indeed great. That, thank you so much, Oforma. There's one final bit like uh, I would like to ask you, how challenging was it with you coming to the UK with your family? Because when we came, like as you narrated the story of finding the accommodation, we also landed up in the time of the national lockdown luckily uh, i did manage to secure a flat where i'm living right now like while i was in india but yes most of the colleagues will definitely face some sort of you know hurdle so how challenging was it and what what would you suggest people who want to come with their families on should they come with uh, like bring them along or should they come first or like bring them afterwards okay. Yeah, so it depends on your situation, really, if you have support, if you have family support, for instance, where you can come with your family and stay with family and friends until you get accommodation, I would say bring them along. There's no point coming and then you traveling back to bring them. But in a, and that situation where maybe you're just the first in your family, you don't really have no anyone here in the UK and then no one to stay with, even to uh, quarantine during the quarantine, but I would say it's really challenging to bring young children along for instance because staying in an hotel might not be conducive so it depends on your situation really for me i had a friend uh, i was able to stay uh, with for the during the quarantine period and i also had family members my fa uh, my family were able to stay with shortly before we got an accommodation so for me it's advisable to bring them along at the same time so it really depends on the situation your situation peculiarly yeah that's great Thank you so much, Dr. Ufuma, for sharing all the, you know, small bits and pieces, which is going to help a lot of colleagues worldwide who are planning to come to the UK with the MTI pathway, who've got their minds, their speculations and so many things going around. So uh, if you guys, if you've got any doubts, you can leave it in the comment below. You can mail us uh, at the given uh, website and the email ID below. And Dr. Ufuma and me would try to sort your problems if they are related to ENT or the MTI or anything in the UK. So thank you so much for all your love and appreciation so far. Thank you so much, Dr. Ufuma, for giving your valuable time and experience. Thank you so much for having me. And I want to appreciate you, Amar, for the good work you're doing in terms of helping others and to, to, to pursue their dream. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So till then, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.